So, tell me something terrible. Two weeks, you could come up with two pages, huh? Look, I've been stressed out. <laughs> I know. We didn't record for a week. I know. So we went We went all of 2021, at least one episode a week. First week into 2022, no episode. That's not true. We took a week off. We took a week off when we had two episodes. We went up north. Yeah, we didn't skip an episode, though. We had a two-parter. Oh, we did? Yeah. We had one come out every week. Look at us go. And we also were doing two a week there for a while. Mm-hmm. That was stupid. Yeah, it was. It's aggressive, but they yeah. were also supposed to be like they were all supposed to be like two pages. Yeah, but originally, it's really hard to do that because yeah. some stuff you like start looking into something and you're like, oh my god. Yeah, you like you're uh, you did like the first ever um, deep dive episode ten, and then I don't think we had one under forty five minutes after that. That's not true. Um, uh, one parter. I bet you there's like three that are under 40 minutes. Lies and slander. <laughs> That's still like a reasonable amount of No, I, I agree. It's just, yeah. an, it's just a hard to do two of those a week for you to write them, me to edit and upload them, and then for our listeners to listen to them. That's a lot of us. Well, and then also restrictions got lifted. Like back then the restrictions were like, you oh, yeah. can't do yeah. any services that, re- that requires mask removal. But like, okay, well, I guess job. I'm going to wax a lot of snatch and a lot of eyebrows and that's all I'm going to do. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. <laughs> and then wonder why when someone Googles my business, it comes out as waxing. It's in your name too. It's half your name. Yeah. No, that's like legit. Like I had facial clients find me and they're like, do you know what you come up as on Google? Yes, it's waxing. I know it's waxing. It's because all I do is wax snatch all day long. It's probably because more people are likely to search, like, where can I get my, you know, eyebrows waxed around me opposed to where can I get a facial wax around, or a facial around me. It's not eyebrow waxes, but Well, okay. you know, I didn't want to. You said snatch <laughs> eight times be, already, and I was like. You're yeah. trying to be a gentleman about it? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> where can I find a hairless cat in Napoleon, Michigan? <laughs> I get told by a lot of people, they're like, I can't find anybody around me. I'm like, really? Because I can think of a dozen places, but I'm glad you found me. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. I'll keep that on the down low. Yeah, you don't need to know there's there's, there's six other places. Um, but I have been waxing for a while, so yeah, lots of hairless cats. Lots of them. On my part. You ready to go back to this, our part-time job? Yep. I say job. It's a job for you. I'm here for fun. I'm here for fun, too. Yeah, the writing's not terrible, this right? One, uh, it's questionable. Good. Anyway, high, it's high school level writing. Welcome to 2022. Yep. First episode. Took a week off. Mental health reasons. <laughs> right. And just the week. I think the thing that got us was both holidays being on Saturdays. Yeah. Like, because the weekends are when you work on this kind of stuff. Yes. Well. And it Family obligations and wanting to see friends and stuff just yeah. kind of derailed everything. And we had Christmas on the first too with your family, which also yep. derails things. Yeah. It was, it was just one thing after another. Mm-hmm. So anyway, you should say who you are and do that thing. Oh, yeah. Hi, I'm Tiffany, and I wax snatches. <laughs> and I'm Scott, and I don't. <laughs> and you're listening to tell <laughs> me something even... terrible. <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> Sorry, I had to call back. <laughs> no, no, you're fine. I was just trying to think of... Did I throw you off? <laughs> well, I was trying to come up with a joke, because I don't like to come out with really horrible jokes in the first five minutes. You know, we have like some, eating snatches? We have some new listeners around and whatnot, like our Facebook page had a little influx of people, so I don't know who's new here. So we'll ease them into the horrible jokes. By minute 30... I'll let it fly. I don't know if we'll get to minute 30. This is only two pages long. Have you met you? We're already like eight minutes in. Ah, shit. No, it's like five minutes. Uh, Anyway. You're going to take the first few minutes out. It'll be fine. Will I? Mm, I hope so. (laughs) No, no, no. I'm going to leave all the audio checks and everything in there. (laughs) Yes, please. Me just belching, making everything (laughs) redline. It's lovely. That sounds great. Does it? (laughs) I might need to pause for the cause and get another drink. I'll just... I can fill the void. Oh, yeah? You're really good with that last time. (laughs) Tell me how awkward and painful it was. I just handed you a golden opportunity to make a fill the void joke, and you sidestepped it. See? I did. Well, you can tell we've taken two weeks off. Mm-hmm. All right. I apologize in advance. I don't know how bad this... Just kidding. <laughs> There's going to be no jokes. It's just going to be me talking. We'll see. What's, uh, what's topic this week? We're going to go back in time. Just a little bit. <laughs> okay. Well, that 99% of these happen not... Current events. Yep. Uh, we're going to go back to um, oh, 903. 903? Yeah, 903. 890. Possibly 
nine twenty five. Why are you making? Why are you just saying random years? Because nobody knows exactly when this woman was born. Okay, it was somewhere between eight ninety and nine twenty five. You're I'm welcome. Go ahead and say that that the the exact year is irrelevant. Yeah, at this point, yes. <laughs> a millennial ago, because let's be honest, millennium ago. There could be really important stuff that happened in any one of those years, and you know my history knowledge. I wouldn't have a clue. I'm sure there were some plagues. Sure. Yeah. I don't know when the plague of Justinian was. The okay. Great Death and like the Black Plague and stuff didn't happen until like the 1400s. Yeah. 1300s. Also, the Great Death, they needed a marketing team. That was like another word for the, the, the plague. Like the plague. The Great Death. Yeah. Or the Black Death or the great plague or the black plague or it doesn't matter it doesn't did you know that it still exists yes because of you telling me these things it's awful in case y'all didn't know the black death is still the bubonic plague is still a thing it's endemic in madagascar like the flu season but they get plague instead you still haven't told me you just said oh sorry random like spouted out a bunch of three digit years okay it's like oh sorry sorry the black plague is still existing when i found out in high school that like when i googled like the art that came out of that time and saw modern day pictures of like bubonic boils on people's necks i was like what what (laughs) what and it still bothers me, and I'm 33, right? 32, and I'm still like, ugh, about it. Anyway, this isn't a plague. Oh, I didn't think so. You it's said a, it's you a said princess. A lady. Yeah, a princess. Okay. Yes. So she was born in like anywhere between 890 to 925, um, in the empire known then as Kievan Rus. It's Russian. Yes. Yeah. Yep, and it is currently now... That's because no- of Chicken Kiev. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't know. It's just a word I recognized. You just assumed it was Russian? No, I know Chicken Kiev's a Russian dish. Really? Yeah. There's more than potatoes and vodka that comes out of Russia? Yeah. It's oh. like thinly pounded chicken that's stuffed and folded over. Okay. Okay. Anywho. I don't cook. <laughs> So it is now um, the Kevin R- Rus or Rouse or it's it was spelled with the U with that little slashy line on the top of it. Okay. Not the straight one, the angled one. Okay. I, I speak American, guys. I'm very <laughs> bad at other accents and umlauts and acutes. Such. and Yeah. Um, so it's currently known now as Russia, Ukraine, and Belarus. Okay. That whole region. So this baby's name was Wait, Old. Belarus, Kiev Rus. Just saying. Maybe it's all similarly spoke. Yeah. Similarly said. Yep. Um, so her name was Olga. <laughs> of course it was. Yep. And then by age fifteen, Olga was married off to Prince Igor the First. Igor and Olga. Yep. He was the what a fairy heir. tale we have going. Yep, here. he was the heir to Ruik, the Ruik dynasty, which had consolidated all of the tribes in the Kievan. It's consolidated, Rus. With, okay. Yeah, like into like one big okay. nation. Yeah, got you. Got yeah, you, yeah. instead of just being a bunch of random little sorry chaotic. When, when we quote unquote speak American and you say talk about consolidating tribes, to me that's not a good thing. <laughs> no, it's genocide. <laughs> yeah, you're like no, 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 no. So when you said consolidate, I was like, oh, is that a nice word for? <laughs> but you're talking of like joining, united, join, yeah, yes. putting everyone under one. Yeah. Yes. Before joining mass forces, genocide yeah. started and like, you know. A beneficial the, joining of tribes. Yes. What a novel concept. I mean, I guess you can say beneficial. They did start collecting tribute from these tribes and or they were going to murder them. Okay. So, so, okay. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't kill them. They were like, give me your money so I can protect you or we'll kill you pledge instead. Pledge your allegiance or die. Yes. Well, pretty much. Oldest trick in the book. <laughs> yeah. But it's better than being like, pledge your allegiance or. um, Or just rape and pillage your village and take it over. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what they... Oh, you're going to get there? Yeah. Okay. There's no raping or pillaging. There's fires They didn't instead. write about that, but... <laughs> no, this was a woman in charge. There was no raping. I don't know. We were much... I, I didn't... You said she was the princess. I didn't realize she was riding around, you we'll know. We'll get there. Um, okay. So... Is this like the lady from Witcher? Kind of. Okay. Yeah. Um, so they consolidated the tribes in the region. God, that it was a very tasteless way to say that. And I didn't think anything of it. Consolidate? <laughs> yeah. Not, it just led me down a path of like wonderment. I didn't know which are direction we, are, the story. Is this a precursor to smallpox <laughs> blankets? <laughs> Thank yeah. you. 
Um, and so they consolidated all the tribes in the region and they started collecting tribute from the tribes to tape. To- you sound like you're part of their PR team. Mm-hmm. We're just going to do a quick consolidation. We're going to have everyone just offer a tribute, you know. Yep. Anyway. Um, and, and in return, you get protection and some semblance of a federation. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Ew. Yeah. God, I whitewashed <laughs> the shit out of that, didn't mm-hmm. I? Ugh. It's ingrained, guys. We're trying to unlearn it. Something. Or is it wherever your source material may have been a bit biased. No, this no, my source material was uh Encyclopedia Britannica. Oh. Um and then you're right, as I'm reading this out loud, this is <laughs> um and history answer dot C O dot UK. Okay. Which is white. <laughs> well, yeah. And uh and then Wikipedia. Wikipedia. Yeah. <laughs> so so we're doing sources early. Good. Um get them out of the way. There's also not a lot of information because this was literally over a thousand years ago. Yeah. Um, and so everything was going smoothly. And then eventually... The con- consolidation was going well. Yes. And then eventually um, things, like I said, they're going well until Igor's father was... He'd kicked the can. And there was a neighboring tribe called the Drevlians. They got sick of paying a bunch of money to this one royal family and decided to start paying tribute to um, a an opposing warlord instead. Okay. So naturally, this offended Prince Igor. A rivalry ensues. Yep. And in 945, he set out a large army to collect what he thought was owed to him. He arrived in Iskoristan, which per- was the it. yeah the, Drefli- the Drevlian's capital. Great little cafe there. <laughs> yes. And uh, they he in an attempt to force the tribe to pay tribute mm-hmm. so the drevlians backed down and uh just decided to pray to pay their tribute because he showed up in mass with, with <laughs> oh shit soldiers. he's here yeah. yeah you still got the money yeah um so on his way back through igor got greedy and decided he was going to return to isk isk i said it right the first time can't do it this time okay rewind 30 seconds listen to it come back to it is perfect to collect a larger sum but again, the Drevlians were sick of this family shit, and they decided this time they were going to fight back. Understandable. They, yep. So they managed to seize Igor. They bent two birch trees down to the ground. <laughs> Are they going to tie him to him and then let him go and just send Igor like a slingshot? A hundred percent. Nice. Yep. They tied him each leg to separate trees. Oh, shit. And they let go. This can be like those T-Rexes in the Jurassic Park they sp- where they like both are trying to bite the guy and they rip him in half. That's exactly what happened. Oh, cool. They split him in, in half. Yep. Nice. Mm-hmm. Um, Hopefully and- Igor had like snipped the top of his underwear to really help that wedge. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> On top of like, everything else. Them? He yes. had a wedgie too. Like that was the worst part. Right. <laughs> oh, my boys. And then died. Yeah. Um. When one leg's in one tree and the rest of his body's in the other. <laughs> And, uh, and, but the Drivlians weren't done. They want, after they killed Igor, they were like, no, we want to actually have power in this region. And seeing that Olga was now a widow, a widow, thanks to them, yeah. uh, they sent an entourage to her castle, informing her of her husband's death and offering her a place by the side of their very own Prince Maul. Okay. Since, you know, she was clearly just a maiden and she was a damsel in distress and need of protection and so- marriage. The one that got bloodied was named Igor. Yep. And the one that did it, his name was Maul. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's a little <laughs> foreshadowing there. <laughs> so they sent out this entourage. Um, they sent out 20 emissar- emissaries who arrived via boat to bring this message to Olga. Okay. Who feigned acceptance of the marriage proposal. All right. She was like, okay, fine. Uh, I'll, but way more elaborate, you know. Yeah. She had to be dramatic about it. She's a princess. She's very dramatic about the entire situation. Yeah. Well, she's a Russian princess. I mean, I'm sure that's probably just a unique brand of princess. Vlad the Impaler would be very proud of. (laughs) I I don't think Russia's had a princess in a while. No. The Romanovs were the last ones. Yeah. Oh, that should be a deep dive. I... Love the story of the Romanovs and Rasputin. Okay, <laughs> and we'll cover him one day. He's great. He's great. I. He's not, but it's a good story. <laughs> like a real bang up guy. I mean, real just top notch. <laughs> <laughs> Nervous Sorry. laughter. He does like to bang up. 
because he's got a big cock. Okay. You don't know that about Russ Putin? He's, he's no. allegedly has like a like 14 plus inch penis. And no. Yeah. Doesn't matter. We'll get to it later on. I don't. I don't know a lot about giant cock lore amongst Russian leaders. You don't know any. How, you don't know much about Rasputin. No. Oh God. I don't. I love Rasputin. I can tell. <laughs> you should be worried. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we'll just line up shots of vodka, and every time you mention his dick, we'll take a shot. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Yeah. Very Russian. Very <laughs> yes, Russian. Yeah. Um. So she feigned her acceptance of the marriage proposal, telling the group to go back to their boat so that she could uh, so burn them out of the water. We'll get to it. I'm just guessing. Just wait. You said this is terrible, and she's a ho- like. So I'm just hoping for the best slash worst. Fire doesn't happen yet. So I just want the Viking burial, like someone shooting flaming arrows at this boat. No, no, no. Okay, that's worse. Good. Um. So and I know she- Vikings aren't Russian. Don't think I do. I know they're not. <laughs> okay. They're they're um. Norwegian, yeah, the, Scandinavia, yeah. Next door neighbors to Russia, um. So, uh, she told them they needed to go back to the boat that they arrived in, so that they could be properly honored the next day. She then ordered her own people to dig a trench in the dead of night. So the emissaries woke, waiting for the festivities to <laughs> start. On the boat, and they're like, "Boy, these people have some weird work hours. Look at them out there just digging a trench." It's inside the walls. Remember, because like back then, castles had walls and shit. Okay. So they got sent back to their boats, and then inside of the castle, they built the trenches. Okay. So the emissaries were waiting for the festivities to start. Olga's people carried them in, like, by their boat. So it was almost like some weird, demented pole bearer situation, like, uh, carrying them in, like, on How their shoulders. How big was his boat? Enough to hold 20 people. Okay. So we're not you talking, know, like, a friggin' flagship ship. No, or we're just talking about, like, a... Like a little boat, okay. and and they were carried in pal- like pal- like the, um, in three hundred. Yep. Yes, the, the um, big tall emperor dude. Xerxes, yeah. yeah, and his slaves carrying him. That yes. was like what they had going on. They're like, gotcha. yes, honor us, worship us, <laughs> and then they went through the castle walls and they sat them into the trench, and they buried them alive. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Fun. <laughs> I did, that's not the kind of trench I had envisioned, but all right. Mm-hmm. Nope. Like a big hole. Just to I was bury thinking, the boat like, I was thinking kind of moat, moaty. No, no. No, you're talking, yeah, they just built. I'm talking like death camp they, style they, trenches. They dug a grave, a yes. mass grave. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, and then <laughs> and then Olga instructed a message to be sent to Prince Mall in return before the rival village found out um, about, you know, Olga's less than gracious uh, welcoming. Yeah. Um, so Olga asked for the highest dignitaries of the Drevlians to mm-hmm. arrive at her homestead to bring her back to the prince, quote, in due honor. Okay. So when this group of dignitaries arrive, Olga presented them with an opportunity to bathe and freshen up in her own bathhouse so that they would be refreshed and more presentable that when they arrived in her court. Acid. No, <laughs> this is where the fire starts. Oh, good. They get in the baths, and then Olga gave orders to have the doors locked and set ablaze, burning the Drevlians that were trapped alive, like inside alive. You had to see that coming. Mm-hmm. This is some Game of Thrones shit, though. Like, yeah, it is. It's got that vibe to it. The um the capital of the Drevlians, yeah. The arist- the aristocracy, for lack of a better word, still has no clue that any of this has happened. Well, you know, word travels slowly. Back I was going to say, phones aren't working. <laughs> no, they're currently down. Yeah. So um yes, <laughs> just no like SOS or like flashlights. Can't do that either. Yeah, carrier Smoke. pigeons weren't yeah. working. <laughs> what pigeons? We'll get to it. Oh, good. <laughs> You're just hitting like literally everything. Terrific. Are you, have you heard of this story yet? I have yet? not, okay. no. So Olga sent another message to the Drevlians. This one was, of course, another ruse. Mm-hmm. She asked that they quote- This old prankster, Olga. <laughs> yeah, she is. Um, so she asked that they quote, per- prepare great quantities of mead in the city where you killed my husband that I may weep over his grave and hold a funeral feast for him. Okay. And she should wasn't... It, should I pour a shot of mead and take it just, you know... In, we do have... In the, honor. We have, like, that Russian... Well, looking no, mead, yeah. Yeah, a Denmark, I think. It's from Denmark. Like, mm-hmm. straight mead. Yeah. I can't drink it. I'm upset. It has the gluten. It has delicious. But she wasn't lying this time. She really did go to she really did like ask them to make 
this festive, a proper feast. Yes, yeah. and and she did attend the feast. Well, you know. So Olga and a small group of her attendants, along with five thousand soldiers, arrived at Igor's grave. Five thousand of her soldiers. Of her soldiers. Okay, mm-hmm. that's a pretty high number for a funeral. Yeah, quite the Drevlin. They're idiots. The Drevlins are idiots. So she did mourn. She'd weep. Uh, they held the festival. Mm-hmm. The Drevlians arrived to honor the man that they killed, and they all got very, very drunk. Surprising. <laughs> yeah. And then Olga gave orders to slaughter them all as she walked casually amongst the bloodshed, and she was kept by company by her attendants. <laughs> yep. Okay. Yep. So her, I'm assuming her 5,000 soldiers probably didn't drink. Ab- probably let, not let the other guys get hammered yep and then let's just murder all the drunk people exactly okay yep some managed to survive and they made it back to the city proper where then olga held a year-long siege over the capital i feel like she's playing chess and they're all playing checkers like yes. oh you slingshot my husband now you're all gonna die yeah okay, yes good. yes you th- this is called Tell Me Something Terrible, but I feel like you really are inspired by Olga's tenacity. She's great. <laughs> She's so great. I was like, this isn't even terrible. You love this story. This is like... <laughs> I'm smiling the whole time. Yes, yeah, so I was going to say, your face is going to hurt tomorrow. She's avenging her husband's death. Yeah. If you die, don't worry. I will ransack and burn a village. I'm waiting. This for, one, probably. I hope just for the visual, she cuts down the trees that they slingshot him with and use them as the battering rams to break the walls. That would really good be good symbol. What? No, that doesn't happen. That would be great. Right. Though. That's what would happen in the TV show. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. No. Instead, she just let them starve for a year. Oh yeah. That well. That's that's, that's in happens. the playbook. Yeah. That's what happens when castles are under siege. Yep. So at the end, they of needed the- to learn to grow potatoes like Ben Affleck on Mars or whatever his name is on Mars. The Martian. That wasn't Ben Affleck. No, it wasn't. That was the other one who's more yep. attractive. Matt Damon. Yes. Matt Damon. What? What's? I don't anyway. know that. I don't. I actually don't know that reference. Ah, <laughs> uh, shit! That one's not Team America. What is that? Is it Team? No. Oh, anyway, awkward silence. That's fine. Someone shouting it. Beth, <laughs> like, is, Beth is formulating her tweet right this moment. <laughs> anyway, telling us right now some obscure reference that we don't get because we're only ten percent into the culture. Well, and like any reference from fifteen years ago, I only remember the joke. I don't remember the origin at this point. Anyway, we've got a lot going on in our lives. <laughs> anyway, the Martian, Matt Damon, he grows poop potatoes and he lives for however long on Mars. I've never seen it. Have you? Yeah, I watched it without you when we had HBO like eight years ago. This is some bullshit. We've had this dis- and we've had this discussion three times. I think. My ass is going to go watch The Revenant without you. That's because, fine. yes, we still haven't seen The Revenant. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I know the story. The Dalit does a great. Does- I know. Oh, I've listened so to good. it. Oh. It's so good. <laughs> is it? Yes. Thanks. Oh, the maggots. Oh, the maggots. <laughs> anyway, keep going. Anyway, at the end of the year, the Drevli- the Drevlians were sick and weak. They received another message from Olga asking why uh, they continued to hold out uh-huh. and that all of the other cities in their region... Um, surrendered. Surrendered, yep. And they bent to her will and that they were had paid their tributes and they were enjoying a life of peace you know tilling their land and giving them money Mm -hmm. so the drevlians sent a message agreeing to pay the tribute to lift the siege but voiced that they were concerned that she was still pissed off about her husband (laughs) probably not wrong Mm -hmm. this is the first smart thing they've done yes so i'll go olga though reassured them that she was not in fact still upset about her husband's death let's let bygones (laughs) be bygones yes and she said that um Murdering their entire village at a festival and all their dignitaries and catching people <laughs> Took on fire. The edge off. Yeah, she was like, "I'm fine. That eye for an eye. <laughs> that Thank itch you. My itch. Yes. Yep. I'm good. Scratch my itch. Scratch my itch. Um, and she felt really bad for them. She's like, "I'm gonna take pity on you because you were weakened and starving because of this siege. So that <laughs> they're gonna be like, "Okay, come in, murder. <laughs> no, not quite. Okay, good. She said, "Because you were weakened and starving, the only tribute I'm going to ask for in return." Is three pigeons and three sparrows from each house. Okay. In the city proper. And relieved, the Drevlians agreed. And they sent the birds over. Mm-hmm. And Olga's soldiers captured the birds per her orders. That night, they strapped strips of cloth dipped in sulfur 
and attach them to the bird's feet and set them on fire and set the birds free. Okay. And the birds flew back to their nests under the eave troughs of the houses, under porches, and back to their coops, <laughs> which then set the entire city of Is- Iskrosten on fire. Okay. Yes. <laughs> it was nearly impossible to extinguish because all of the houses caught fire at once. <laughs> and they're all made of straw, essentially, I'd imagine. <laughs> yep. No, there are probably some cob houses in there. Well, yeah. yeah. Straw and mud. Which, yeah, straw yeah. and mud and poop. Yeah. <laughs> and... um. Which has been cured intentionally to be dry. Yeah, it takes a few years. Yeah. Um, so Olga, uh, some of the people attempted to escape. Any elders that did survive the blaze were killed. Others were given to Olga's servants as slaves. And the remaining survivors in the cities decided to become subservient and, pl- and, and they paid the tribute. <laughs> yeah, they, I, this lady, this bitch be crazy. Yeah. Um, and uh, She sent flaming birds at us. Yes. And she, <laughs> and she, was, she was in charge of Kievan ruse Mm -hmm. for decades because when um igor was murdered essentially yeah their son was only three years old so she she was she became the queen regent for you Uh know lack of leadership yep and um despite all of her that must have satiated her like revenge she was good after that one last prank (laughs) just a fiery prank yeah (laughs) she's got a um, Nero would be would be impressed. Can you imagine her just walking through all her soldiers and then like I imagine she looks like a stereotypical Russian woman and just looking up and oh. screaming in Russian. She's got this like beautiful like bodice yeah. with like and flowing and this big long cape but, like, and everything's covered in diamonds and silver. But like pale white skin and just yes. screaming in Russian, light the birds <laughs> <laughs> and then they just get released. It has to be stunning visual. There's a whoosh. oh oh, I can see it now. Everything's like nice and dark. There's heavy care screw everywhere and lighting, and then just all of a sudden everything becomes like warm toned, and the flames are glistening right, off yeah. of her long cape with the like silver and diamonds, and like yeah. one nice emerald in the middle to just really make the color pop. Yeah, so yep. she looks like Iron Man. Yeah, yes, <laughs> she's uh, got it right in the center of her chest. Oh, uh, beautiful! Yeah. Light the birds. Yeah. Yep, and that's where our minds go. <laughs> yep. If you guys need creative direction when you're making the um the the like pseudo doc based off of yeah. this woman's life, yeah. we're here for it. Um, so after the burning of is Croatan is Croatan this Russian tribe you've called it seventeen different things doesn't so. matter. Yep. Um, she uh, was finally satiated. She softened a little bit. And so, like I said, when Igor was murdered, she became the Queen Weeg- the Queen <laughs> Queen Queen nope. Regent. The Queen Regent. <laughs> the Queen the qu- the Queen Regent. That's Russian, actually. Yeah, until her son. Uh, what four letter name does he have? <laughs> it's not a four letter name. Oh no! It's something. Is it awesome? It's. Uh, oh no. <laughs> This is worse than every single Russian on that plane Evgeny? that died. No, it's Sviat Sviatoslav. Here, let me see. It. I'll butcher it. Uh, good luck and Godspeed. Sviatoslav. Sviatoslav. So, Sounds good. It, I think that's right. Yep. Sviatoslav. Sviatoslav. He finally came to age. He goes age. by Svi. Yeah, Svi came to age uh, to rule the Kievan Rus. He was only three when all of this murdering happened and <laughs> so in, she's like nursing him and like doing this shit yes i'm sure well, I guess, she, yeah, she had a wet nurse that, by yeah, then yeah it, yeah um so in the meantime while <laughs> they're just Svial- in a ditch and she's like sitting up there <laughs> yeah, breastfeeding <laughs> yeah like that weird game of the um cat uh cat sister in game of thrones with mm-hmm. the weird 11 year old who was still breastfeeding <laughs> yeah <laughs> completely normal let them fly oh my god it all yeah. comes back so, anyway, while he was growing up and Olga was ruling, she um, had wound up building trading outposts, hunting reserves were mapped out, town boundaries were laid, she marked empire boundaries and centralized state rule, which allowed for more ethnically diverse and unified baby Russia. And then she decided to shed her pagan heathen ways. She traveled to Constantinople. Istanbul. A long time gone, <laughs> but not Constantinople. <laughs> Uh, to be baptized. Okay. Yep. She was baptized under the guidance of Emperor Constantine the Seventh. Okay. Not, not the Great. Okay. Um, and his patriarch. <laughs> fucking patriarchy. And um, and then like that was how, who she was baptized under. 
I love when you say like historical stuff like that. Like the you seventh, know Constantine at least, right? Yeah, I'm sure. But, I read it and you, I like, was Constantine like Constantine the seventh. I was like. Am I supposed to know who the fuck Constantine the Seventh is? Like, no, but Constantine the Great. You yeah, know. no, yeah, and, yeah, he's literally the reason why Christianity exists. Yeah, but I mean, apart like, from like Jesus when, and all that. When you're like but Constantine the Seventh, I was like, am I supposed to know who the Seventh? Guy? I was just clarifying that it wasn't Constantine Thank the Great you. because he happened. It's also like, like year one thousand by now. So y- y- almost. Yeah, yeah, almost. Like Constantine the Great was what the three hundreds? Something I don't know. Don't ask me. I don't do dates now. You think I know dates historically? Fuck You no. should. You were raised in the church. We can talk about Constantine in the church? He's the reason why Christianity is so big. Okay. It's not in the Bible. No. He... I'm just explaining to you, when you're a child growing up in church, they don't talk about, like... Why the Bible exists in the first place? Yeah. Because he's the reason why the Bible exists in the first place. Okay. I'm just explaining to you... That in, like, Sunday school, that's not a topic that comes up. If you, like, studied the Bible outside of church, yes, that's probably, like, if I would have taken actual... It took more than, like, the one theology class they made you take at Spring Arbor. It's not even theology. It was just whatever the random Bible class I had to take every year was. Ugh. But it was more like it was more like self-help than it was anything else. It really was. It was awful. I hated it. Yeah, you made I took it, like, one three class. weeks. <laughs> Didn't I made it, like, eight weeks? Anyway, finish your story. <laughs> Anyway, um, so she decided to become Christian. She was baptized um, under the guidance of Emperor Constantine VII. And then eventually, um, Emperor Constantine decided that he needed to propose marriage to Olga. Oh, good. Yes. And she replied that it would be spiritual incest since he technically became her spiritual godfather when she was baptized and that the goddaughter... Um, her as the goddaughter and him as the godfather were not allowed to be married. Okay. Um, it's also speculated. And then she burned the village. <laughs> no, nope. It was also speculated that she did that shit on purpose uh, so that she didn't have. <laughs> yeah. That was a polite way to be like, no, I think that'd be creepy. <laughs> I may or may not have had some forethought into this. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, but there's also some that think that she truly did want to become a Christian. Um. You know, it's one of those fine, uh-huh. it's a thousand years ago, she gets yeah. lost in translation. So she did manage to avoid all of the other marriage proposals that she had throughout her life. Um, and she did continue to rule when her son was out on war campaigns. Okay. Yep. So despite her pushing her son, how did you pronounce his name? Svi. Yeah. Yeah. Her son, or something. Fiatslav remained a heathen and rejected Christianity. But once he did finally come into power, he didn't have all of the Christians killed like other rulers did. Because <laughs> his mom was one. Yes. Yeah. Um. So the Christians and the pagans were able to like live, you know, yeah. cohesively, which altered like yeah. the acceptance later on. Mm-hmm. It, it, they were a little ahead of their time. Yeah. And they also made a really big, yes, and, and it did make a big impact from like what I was reading on like Russian culture and acceptance and stuff. So yeah. if it wasn't for the snow, I'd say we should move to Russia. I've got the blonde hair for it. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh shit. Oh no. This is how we wind up being black bagged and disappeared. Guys, I was joking. It was, I was kidding. Please don't kill us. <laughs> They're like listening, like uh V for Vendetta style. Like, Oh no, they said they want to be Russians. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It was, it was her. It was her. It was that one. Divorce. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't even know her. <laughs> right? Yeah. So um, Olga also had a bunch of churches built throughout Kiev, mm-hmm. uh, Kiev and Russia, uh, Rus, too. So eventually, Svi wanted to leave the city he grew up in and relocate the capital to a city on like the the Danube, just to be like like more centralized riverfront property. Yeah. But Olga had been getting sick, so she asked him to stay just a bit longer, and she died of her sickness in 969. So Sviatslav moved near to the Danube, and the legacy still lives on. Olga was raised to sainthood in 1547, when she became the first <laughs> Russian saint. Her her miracles are a little sketchy there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, she made fire fly. How did that happen? Right? She burned a village with never stepping foot in it. It's crazy. She buried a boat full of people on land. Much like the ark. <laughs> yes. She's, she's got some skills. Uh, this one, Mother Teresa, Olga, a lot of similarities there. So she became the first Russian saint. Mm-hmm. She is the saint of converts and widows. 
Okay. Yep. <laughs> Definitely two of her highlights. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, kind of picking, kind of jumped over a few things in between those two. The widow part and then the saint part. There's a lot of in between there. We're just going to ignore. That's yes. fine. That's fine. <laughs> Forgiveness. It's important. I get it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's it's, it's, Chris, it's Christianity's mo. <laughs> yeah. And uh, she still lives. On in the heavy metal scene, okay, in Eastern Europe, uh, because she was such a ruthless avenger, avenger of her husband's murder, and that is Olga. How Olga does she live Okiev. on in the heavy metal scene? She's like an inspiration of a lot of things. Like, there's a French heavy metal band that like has her like on their cover and shit. Oh, okay, yeah. Like, she's just big in the heavy metal. People are like, "Fuck yeah!" This woman who murdered yeah. a bunch of people, and she's Russian, <laughs> and so she's. A She's big like influence. a folk hero, yeah. essentially. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. Lots of fun. And I want to see what she looks like. Just a normal white lady from <laughs> Russia. <laughs> okay. That's not as um, illustrious as I wanted it to no, be. No, wait. Head. I might have a meme that I saved because I found this by going down like An just... Olga meme? Mm-hmm. I don't want to see an Olga meme. Anyway, can you already did sources, right? Yeah, I did. Kind of at the beginning. So yeah, with capita okay. history well, answer dot co dot uk and encyclopedia britannica and yesterday because it's coming out tuesday the meme you saw monday perhaps may have been an olga meme yes be foreshadowing yes okay yeah that's where i found it because like someone there's some like dark history lore um group that i follow Mm -hmm. on facebook and somebody shared a thing about um it started with a meme where someone was like trying to be creative and they made these birdhouses that were tiles that go on roofs. And so uh-huh. they're like, look at all these birdhouses that we made like in this big city where birds can't live and they'll be able to like have babies and propagate like these wonderful nests, like birdhouses uh-huh. on roofs. And someone underneath was like, that's not a good idea, bro. <laughs> and this is why. And I was like, <laughs> somebody set a city on fire with birds. What? <laughs> I want to know how and fast those her. birds had to fly or how slow those cloths had to burn. They might have been long cloths. I feel like those birds are probably like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Like are the bad guys <laughs> the little in wings. Home Alone 2? <laughs> yes. When they're, just, they're climbing on the... Why is this rope covered in kerosene? <laughs> anyway. Yeah. That's where my brain goes. Yep. Well, we have birds in our backyard. Look how fast they fly. That's true. Our dog takes after them thinking she's going to catch one. That's true. But I'm, she's short and fat. Well, I'm pretty sure she snatched the tail off of a dove once. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Doves are dumb and slow. Yep. There's a billion of them around here. And they make dumb sounds when they take off. They're uh, like, boop, 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 when they yeah. take off, listen to a bird fly, a dove fly. They're dumb. They're... They're big birds. They got a lot of put a little oomph in it to get off the ground. I don't understand how they like evolutionarily haven't died off yet because they're slow. Du- they're so dumb and lumpy. I don't know. And they nest out on the like the ends of branches. Like, how have they not died out yet? That's a numbers game, you know. <laughs> they're so stupid. <laughs> there's a, there's a bunch of them. They're so dumb. <laughs> right. Anyway, thanks for listening. Yeah. This is usually where you say if you made it this far. Yeah, if you've made it this far. And I say. Congratulations. Yes. We see we have we're scripted here. This is a scripted show. Every joke's been just kidding. Yes. And I just had to have a tirade about doves and how dumb they are. Morning doves are the worst. Yeah. You may have influenced my opinion. They're on like doves. nature's alarm clocks. They can fuck right off. <laughs> yeah, they can. I can't even do that. My voice is broken right now. I'm thirsty. <laughs> Hold on, I get a drink. Are you gonna try it again? No, 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 no. Okay. And I didn't do any hacky Russian accents. I'm Look at me go. so proud of you. Thank you. That's all I got. You did pull that name out of your ass, though. It was a good one. Well, you know, I've watched hockey for a few years. You learn a few things. You put a V next to an S and I'm screwed. There's a joke to be made there again. <laughs> Sorry. What's the S? I don't know. <laughs> I was just racking my brain. I was like... None of them are Sir, good. what kind of aliens have you been talking to? <laughs> what are you doing over there? <laughs> Just hiking up your sweatpants? Yep, you made me really uncomfortable. <laughs> you, ready, you ready to run out of this room? <laughs> yeah, you said S is next to V's, and I'm like, what are S's? <laughs> Anywho, we're going to go now. <laughs> and we should be back next week on schedule, right? Yes. Okay. And uh, we did a live Twitch last two weekends ago? Sure. Right at, around Christmas. Mm-hmm. And it's on, on Christmas. It was was a- it on Christmas? Christmas Eve? It might have been. Christmas Eve, maybe. Anyway, um, it didn't save on our Twitch because I don't know how to use Twitch. Now I figured that out. So 
going forward, they will actually save on Twitch, but it is on our YouTube. If you're super curious and you just want to see us talk about weird offbeat Christmas traditions. Yep. Which, like which cats. now is probably not what you want. But yeah, we did. No, uh, it's fun. It's about like dwarves and cats and horse heads. Yeah. And we showed off our, our cats. <gasps> yeah. If you're a big cat weirdo and you want to see what our cats look like. Anyway, thanks for listening. Welcome all new people. Yes. If you're new here. Or if you're old here, thank you. We appreciate you too. Indeed. Okay. <laughs> all right. Scott's sleepy. He is. We're going to bed. I don't know who he is, but he sounds sleepy. Anyway, goodbye. Bye. Oof, that was terrible. Thanks for listening to our terrible podcast. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts, or wherever you like to listen. Feel free to follow us on Twitter at TMSTPod. And if you'd like to support the show, you can find us on Patreon at Tell Me Something Terrible.